is a leaky gut part of your patient's pelvic health problem? Hi, my name is Jessica Drummond, founder of the Integrative Pelvic Health Institute, where we educate women's healthcare professionals on getting to the root causes of their patient's symptoms and using integrative tools to solve those issues. So today let's talk about leaky gut. Leaky gut is kind of the um, colloquial term for what's known in the literature as intestinal permeability. So let's walk through this and then we're going to, so we're going to do two things today. We're going to walk through what is leaky gut or intestinal permeability, if you want to get sciencey about it. Um, and then the second thing we're going to do is talk about how having a leaky gut, you know, a small intestinal system can have anything to do with chronic pelvic pain conditions. Okay. So first, let's talk leaky gut. So your intestines, your small intestines are lined. They're kind of like a skin on the inside because technically when you eat food and you know, bring it into your body and any toxins or bacteria that you bring in with it, all are technically outside of your body. The gut is like the internal skin that protects you and allows only certain things, just like your skin is permeable and allows some things into your body through and into your bloodstream, it keeps other things out. And that's the role of the lining of the gut. The problem is, is this lining, so imagine this is the lining all inside those miles and miles of, of curvy small intestine, is only one cell thick. So here are the cells that are lining your intestines. Then you've got your bloodstream and your lymph um, systems running. And so here is where all the food particles and bacteria and anything that you ingest comes in. And then this, this one cell thick lining is your barrier to keep, to allow nutrients to pass through and go into the bloodstream. And, you know, use them all over your body where you need those nutrients, but they're also have the role, this lining has the role of keeping out dangerous bacteria or food particles that aren't small enough yet. There's like chunks of cheese here that have too many cells that should be too big to pass through here. And the way they do that is there are tight junctions. These cells are actually like right next to each other. There are tight junctions between each cell that keep this barrier strong. The problem is, is that a poor diet, stress, certain medications, infections, many things can cause this tight junction to break down, can inflame these little cells that are supposed to be your, you know, soldier barriers and make this this lining that was supposed to be very strong against bacteria and food particles that are undigested and other toxins and weakens that barrier. Another thing that does that is grains containing gluten. So I'm sure you, gluten free is kind of all the rage right now. So if you eat a grain that contains gluten, something like wheat or rye, that gluten contains a protein called gliadin, which contains a protein called zonulin. And zonulin actually breaks down these tight junctions, again, creating a free barrier for things like chunks of undigested cheese or bacteria or other toxins to get straight through this barrier and into the bloodstream. And that kicks off an inflammatory response from the bloodstream. You've got mast cells and you've got histamines and you've got other inflammatory cytokines that cause all kinds of redness and swelling and inflammation, not just in the gut, but because it's connected so closely with this blood and lymph system can be spread throughout the entire body as generalized chronic inflammation. So I hope that clears up what leaky gut is, intestinal permeability. Now let's talk about what does leaky gut have to do with pelvic pain? So there are four things that, that are likely connections between leaky gut and pelvic pain. The first is that anyone who treats pelvic pain conditions knows that there's a fairly large overlap 
between pain in the pelvis, which may be ovarian, may be ovary related, may be bladder related, and gastrointestinal issues. So leaky gut certainly plays a big role in things like inflammatory bowel disease or um, irritable bowel syndrome. So if you have a GI condition, these viscera have neurologic crosstalk and you may have an overlapping pain in the pelvis that really is causes, is initiated by the pain in the GI system. The second big issue is that chronic inflammation, we talked about you know, that inflammation that starts in the gut can spread throughout the body through the blood and lymph systems. So some people who have intestinal permeability or leaky gut don't have any GI symptoms at all, but they show up with things like eczema, their skin, so the inner skin affects the outer skin. There's weight gain, which is a symptom of chronic inflammation atherosclerosis, again, you've got a um, epithelium lining the vessels, getting inflamed. So while I did not find any direct studies linking leaky gut chronic, you know, caused chronic inflammation with things like, for example, um, interstitial cystitis or other causes of bladder pain, or perhaps even vulvar dermatological conditions. So you figure if the leaky gut can impact you know, skin throughout the body with things like eczema or inflame arterial tissues and atherosclerosis. There's no reason why it couldn't be a potential factor in bladder pain or vulvar dermatological conditions. So that's something else to consider, although there's not really any direct evidence linking those two. The third problem is that when you've got systemic chronic inflammation that originates in the gut, you can have inflammation in the brain. And this is emerging as a big issue in the research on depression. It can also show up as something as simple as kind of just brain fog. You know, you feel like you've forgotten what you were gonna say or you woke up feeling like a little unfocused that morning. And because that inflammation can cross the, the blood brain barrier, the hypothalamus, which is part of that HPA axis that we talk about in the stress response system, can be inflamed and make that HPA system more sensitive to stress, an overreaction to stress. And we know that cortisol, that stress hormone, is usually at abnormal levels in women who have pelvic pain. And finally, there's an emerging theory that there are several factors involved in autoimmune disease about three or four factors. And one of those key factors is having a leaky gut. And this is showing up in the research on celiac disease, autoimmune thyroiditis, and we know celiac disease is now showing up as being related in the research to interstitial cystitis and potentially endometriosis. And autoimmune thyroiditis throws off your hormone balance system which can cause you know, problems with estrogen and other sex hormones or adrenal hormones, which can show up as pelvic pain conditions in terms of symptomology. So I hope we answered for you the question. Number one, what is leaky gut? And if you're still confused, please ask any questions you have in the comments below. And number two, how could it possibly be related to pelvic pain conditions? And we've walked through four reasons that leaky gut can influence pelvic pain conditions and perhaps even vice versa. And again, if you have any questions on that, please ask them in the comments below. And the only thing I'm asking of you is to tell me the number one thing you learned from this video today. If you liked it, please like it and share it with your friends. Thanks so much. Again, I'm Jessica Drummond from the Integrative Pelvic Health Institute, and we'll see you next time. If you like this video, please like it and share it with your friends. And before you go, go to my website, integrativepelvichealthinstitute.com. Fill in your name and email at the boxes on the top right hand side of the homepage and click submit. And before you go, I would love it if you would leave me a comment below this video. I love hearing from you.